A few weeks ago, I reviewed substance samplers for the Grammetry editions, and in one of the comments, there was a great suggestion. How well does Polycam compare to other photogrammetry applications? In case you're not aware, Polycam is a cool little iPhone application that allows us to 3D scan an object in multiple ways. We can use iPhone's LiDAR hardware or just regular photos. LiDAR processing happens on the device, but for photogrammetry, the processing happens on the company's servers. If I'm not mistaken, Polycam uses Apple's SDK to produce the mesh of the objects, so in theory, the results should be as good as other desktop software. So the potential is there. Now, let's find out how well Polygam performs. One might wonder, why would you want to use a service like Polycam to do all your scanning? In theory, at least, it takes a lot of boxes. For one, we're not bogging down our system. All the processing happens on their servers. We also don't have to buy a dedicated piece of software like Metashape. Another great benefit is the fact that we're not restricted to our phone. We can use a regular web browser to set up and preview our scans, and we can also use regular photos, not just photos taken with an iPhone. Polycam is also really cheap. For $7.99 per month, we can process 150 scans. That's five cents per scan. And on top of that, we can easily cancel at any time. So in theory, at least, Polycam sounds like a really cool service. Let's see though in practice how good it actually is. To keep things consistent, I'm gonna test the same set of images I used in this substance sampler video, and more specifically, this cool wooden stick and this big rock. The setup process is extremely easy. We just upload the images, pick the quality setting we want, and everything else is handled by the software. It was on this first initial setup though, where I realized that we won't be getting any highly detailed scans from this service. Why, you may ask? Well, here's why. The image data for the big rock is relatively big in size, 1.3 gigabytes to be exact. Watch what happens when I hit the upload button. It says preparing, and it takes quite a bit of time to go to the next step. So this immediately tells me that some automatic resizing is happening behind the scenes. I can understand why Polycam does that. They want to minimize the bandwidth used per user, and they probably want to reduce the processing time per scan. With a low resolution image, things can go by much faster. You might think that they're creating a zip file, but images don't really compress that well. The next step, which is the actual uploading of the data, seems to validate my assumption. Notice in the activity monitor the amount of data uploaded. It tops out at 280 megabytes. But even if for some reason this value is incorrect and the amount uploaded is more than 280 megabytes, it's definitely nowhere near the original 1.3 gigabytes. And the reason I'm so certain is because I have a slow upload speed. The files took three and a half minutes to upload and I have a 10 megabit per second upload speed. So there's no way I could have uploaded 1.3 gigabytes in that time frame. My upload time actually lines up pretty well with the value activity monitor gave us. So it looks like Polycam is doing something to the files. I guess it reduces the resolution and also adjusts the compression quality. Both of these adjustments though work against photogrammetry. If we want to have detailed meshes, we need high resolution and high quality images. Just for context, the original resolution of the images is around 4,000 by 5,000 pixels. But that's me speculating. Let's see how the actual objects look like. And let's start with a wooden stick first. The scan didn't take long to process. After maybe two or three minutes, the object showed up in my library. The result is not bad. Especially with the texture applied, things look fine. But keep in mind that we want to use the service for actual asset production, so the geometry detail should be as high as possible. That's why I use the RAW option. That's the setting that gives us the maximum amount of geometry detail. With that setting, we only get the diffuse part of a texture, but we can produce everything else, normals, displacement, roughness, etc. ourselves. So once we disable the texture and focus on the geometry, it's clear that we're missing quite a bit of detail. All parts of the object are defined, but 
That's about it. There's no extra detail there. That's in stark contrast to PhotoCatch's results. The scan definitely took way longer than Polycam's 3 minute processing time, but the results are a lot better. We can see the wood grain, all the small bumps and the details of the stick, it's all there. Keep in mind that both scans use the same raw option, so in theory we should have the same amount of detail. Another interesting thing has to do with the diffuse textures we get from both apps. Polycam delivers one 8K texture compared to PhotoCatch's two 8K textures. So with Polycam, it looks like we get less detail in both the mesh and the texture. Don't get me wrong, Polycam's results are perfectly usable. It's just not up to the level I would have liked. It's not asset production level quality. Polycam's results are very close to substance samplers. If this was a blind test, I wouldn't be able to tell you which mesh comes from Substance Sampler and which comes from Polycam. The Mac version of Sampler also uses Apple's SDK, so it makes sense that we're getting similar results. But the interesting thing here is that in Substance Sampler, I was forced to use the high setting because the raw option had some sort of bug. So it looks like Sampler's high setting matches Polycam's raw setting. I don't know if this is a bug on Polycam's processing or if the service picks certain options to reduce bandwidth, but whatever the case may be, the result is definitely not the raw result we get from PhotoCatch. Now let's check the big rock scan. Here the results are quite a bit worse. There are visual glitches in several different areas. We also have this weird effect where highly detailed areas sit right next to extremely blurry areas. I suspect that the less than ideal image data along with Polycam's reduced image resolution is throwing things off. The good thing is that even this mesh can be saved. If we adjust it in ZBrush, we will be able to get a good result back, but ideally we want to start with the best data possible. Here's what I got back from PhotoCatch. We have a lot more detail to work with. Of course, there are still areas that are not detailed, but that's a user error. I was a little bit sloppy when taking the picture, so no matter the program used, the results would never look 100% perfect. For what it's worth, Sampler also struggled with the data. It also has visual glitches, and the mesh has a much lower resolution compared to Polycam. I can't pick one over the other. Both results are not that great. It's crazy how big of a variance we get with these three programs. All of them use Apple solution, but it looks like if things are not well implemented, the results can be very bad. I decided to give Polycam another chance, so I uploaded one last set of images. This is a set of data I've used in one of the assets available in my food collection, so I know that we can get really good results out of it. Before I show you the Polycam result, let's first check PhotoCatch. As you can see, we have really nice details throughout the object. All the details that come from the baking of the bread and the surface that the bread sat on are very nicely portrayed. And the same goes for the textures. We get two 8K textures that perfectly describe the surface. Now let's see Polycam's result. As expected, we don't get the same level of detail. There's quite a bit of stuff left out. Is the result bad? No, not at all, but I wouldn't really use Polycam to do any final production scanning. Which brings us to the key question, who is it for? My guess is Polycam is aiming hobbyists and people who like to experiment with new technologies. But at the same time, I'm not so sure a hobbyist would pay 8 euros per month. It's not like the cost is prohibitive, but I think that most people will try it for a month or two, maybe a little bit longer, and then they will either move to the next hobby or they will buy another piece of software that gives them a better result. So Polycam sits in this weird position between a prosumer application and a hobbyist one, without really satisfying any of these areas. The newest version of Polycam has some improvements to room scanning, which uses iPhone's LiDAR, so maybe I could see real estate agents using it more extensively. But that comes for free since everything is processed locally. 
So yeah, I don't know. I would say Polycam has incredible potential, but it's probably let down by the restrictions of a startup company. They cannot afford to spend ridiculous amounts of money for server and bandwidth costs. And as a result, the final product cannot reach its full potential. But it's understandable, they don't have Epic's money where they can afford to push multiple gigabytes of data for just one scan. I guess if you're starting out or if you want to get something back really really fast, Polycam is a perfectly fine product. But beyond that, there are better solutions out there, even free ones. So if you want to give Polycam a try, I wouldn't discourage you. It does what it's supposed to do. It has a good enough preview editor and it can spit out some good looking 3D assets. Just don't expect production level quality. I just wish they could offer photo catches level of quality, even if that would mean increasing the price a little bit. Anyway, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.